My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to share what I've learned from watching over a thousand hours on YouTube about money. If you're new to my channel, I am in my mid thirties. My wife and I were looking to achieve financial independence and retire early, so we follow the FIRE movement by our mid forties. Over the last two years, I've been investing a lot of time in educating myself and working on my financial literacy. Like you, I went to a public school and I did not learn about finance. In college, I took an accounting 101 course and, and learned about revenue, I learned about the bottom line, I learned about expenses, liabilities, but I didn't really learn about money and about investing. Over the last two years, I've done extensive research on what it means to, be, to make money. What is money? How does it impact me as an individual? So let's begin. The first thing that I've learned about money here on YouTube is that the rich invest different than the poor. The rich invest in assets. What is an asset? An asset is something that appreciates over time. A misconception of mine when I first started investing when I was younger was that a vehicle, a car was an investment. The bicycle that I bought when I was 16 was an investment that it was going to appreciate over time. That was a misconception. I didn't understand that. An asset is something that will grow and, and gain value over time. An asset could be, for example, a home. It could be real estate. It could be stocks, portions, pieces of a, of a company, of an investment, of, of a, a business. Most discretionary items do not appreciate over time. That new car that you just bought is not an asset. It has value, but it is not an appreciating asset. It is a depreciating asset. The key difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich invest in appreciating assets, not depreciating assets. The second thing that I've learned here on YouTube is that your money should work harder than you. Growing up, you're taught to go to school, get a job and work your nine to five. You're taught to make as much money at the best job that you can get with the best benefits, with the best 401k plan. What I've learned is the rich understand what the poor don't is that as long as you're trading time for money, you will remain poor. You will work until the day you die. So the way that you need to fix that is you need to have your money work hard for you by creating passive income. So what is passive income? Passive income is not something magical that just comes out of thin air. It is something that has to be built up. It typically takes time to grow. When I mean grow, meaning maybe you're, you're building up a, a rental property business or you're investing in a rental property. That doesn't just happen overnight. It takes time. But by doing so, you gain the benefit down the road. You invest the time up front and in the back end, that's where you receive the, uh, the rental income. Another example would be investing into a company or a business or a stock or ETF that pays a dividend. A dividend that rewards you as a shareholder of the business and you're receiving quarterly or monthly dividend paychecks from that business. That would be an example of passive income. The most important thing that I've learned about this piece is that time is your most valuable resource. And as long as you're exchanging time for money, you will work until the day you die. Until you can start building up a stream of, of income that is producing income for you while you sleep, and I'm not saying that this is easy, but this is what the rich understand that the poor do not. The third thing that I've learned is paying taxes will keep you poor. The rich don't pay taxes. And why is this? The rich legally optimize their tax burden so that they are taxed at the most favorable rate. The poor don't do this. Most economies around the globe are built for entrepreneurs. The tax laws favor entrepreneurs. Now these tax laws are obviously always fluctuating and changing over time. The rich take advantage of the current laws they're subject to and the poor do not. An example of this is with real estate. The rich understand this. The rich take advantage of this and the poor do not. The fourth thing that I've learned is compound interest is truly the eighth wonder of the world. Not everyone understands this. The poor most definitely do not understand the power of compounding interest. He who understands it earns it and he who doesn't 
pays it. If you were to invest without compounding interest, you would have substantially less over a longer period of time. The key thing that I've learned here is time. Over time, compounding interest is the greatest force in the universe. The fifth thing that I've learned is that inflation is the silent killer. When looking at the US dollar and the purchasing power over time compared to the currency in circulation in the market, the purchasing power of consumers has dramatically gone down over time. This has to do with printing of money. It has to do with other events that have taken in place with the Fed. What I have learned is your money, your US dollar is worthless. It does not hold any true value over time. The US dollar is decreasing in value. Your purchasing power is decreasing exponentially as time goes on. Let's look at an example. If you're 25 years old today, if your mother would have purchased a stroller when you were born for $100, that $100 would not have the same purchasing power today. If you, 25 years later, were to have a child and purchase a stroller or the same stroller, that stroller would cost $173. Now in practice, there's obviously gonna be technological advances and differences there, but that $100 that was used to purchase a stroller in 1995 does not have the same purchasing power in 2020. Let's use another example. If you've ever heard the saying from maybe your grandpa or your grandparents, and they say, back in my day, uh, a Snickers used to cost a nickel, okay? I used to hear that from time to time when I was younger. And it always kind of confused me. Well, okay, well, a Snickers grandpa doesn't cost, you know, a nickel. It costs $1.25, right? Or it costs $2 today, right? If we look back at a Washington Post article um, that states, in 1930, when the Snickers candy bar was introduced, it weighed 2.5 ounces and cost a nickel. The price didn't change for nearly 40 years, but by the time it did, Snickers was down to a skinny 1.16 ounces, less than half of its original weight. Then in 1969, there was a new standard Snickers bar. It weighed a hefty 2.3 ounces, nearly twice as much as the old one. The price was twice as much too, with 10 cents. More price increases followed as Snickers climbed to 15 cents in 1973. 20 cents in 1976, and 25 cents in 1978. If we fast forward to today in 2020, if I were to purchase a Snickers candy bar that weighed 1.86 ounces, I would pay 99 cents excluding tax. Inflation is the silent killer. I call it the silent killer because you don't realize it from day to day. If you look back five years, 10 years, then you may be able to pinpoint a few examples of products or services that costed a significantly less amount 10 years ago than they do today. The reason why this is so impactful and so important to understand is we don't recognize it. We don't see it happen overnight. We don't see those small movements year over year in most cases but they are real. Over the years, I've watched many different personalities, many different videos on different topics. What I've noticed is also in my own experience is many will watch, but few will act. There are a lot of videos on investing. There's a lot of videos on real estate investing. And I've noticed in the first months when I was consuming investing videos, real estate videos, I was watching for entertainment. It was interesting. It was it was, I was learning, but I wasn't applying what I was learning. What I noticed is it was a different form of entertainment. It was not something that I was using for self-development, but entertainment. We live in an age where hustle is rewarded. Those that go above and beyond, that are hustling, that are working and going the extra mile are rewarded. What I've learned is by watching something and not acting on it does not bring me anything. Acting on what I'm watching, acting on what I'm learning is really where the self-development comes in. The seventh thing that I've learned here on YouTube about money is that money alone does not buy happiness, but it can buy freedom. The freedom to choose what you do with your time. That is the most powerful thing here on YouTube that I've learned, that money does buy freedom. It allows you to do what you want with your time. It enables you to be free and to not be limited with your time and your resources. We talked about earlier about time is your most valuable resource. Having the option, the flexibility on whether or not you work a nine to five job, whether you live in one city or another city, 
Money gives you that opportunity and gives you that freedom. It alone cannot buy happiness, but it provides you with the ability to have freedom in your life. Personal finance and money YouTube channels all have a different message. They have a different motive. But what I would encourage all of you to do before you watch another video on YouTube about personal finance or money, ask the question, what do you want to get out of the video? And ask yourself throughout the video, what can I do to implement what I am learning? Thank you so much, everybody, for watching the video. If you're new to the channel, I'd invite you to subscribe. If you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and I will catch everybody in the next video.